Welcome, everybody, to another brand new episode of It's My Wrestling Podcast. I'm, of course, as always, your host, Chris Dees. Please, before I get started, like I always ask, make sure you hit subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube and follow if you're listening on any audio platforms. Today's guest is a lady I'm very, very excited to speak to. There's loads that I want to get into with her. She is, of course, the Dynamite Doll. She's the daughter of the one and only, the late and great, the Dynamite Kid. She is the one and only... Miss Bronwyn Billington. Bronwyn, thank you so much for joining me. It's an absolute pleasure. How's it going today? It's going really great. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. No, no, no. Like I say, thank you so much for giving me your time. It's an absolute pleasure. I am excited to speak to you about your father. I know you must get a million questions about him all the time, so I'm really sorry if any of these have been asked. I'm sure they probably have, but as a fan, I... I don't like to like listen to other interviews or read other interviews before I interview a guest. I just want to ask what it is that I'm interested in. So, like I say, okay. I apologize. Right. If you've been asked any of it before. So, I'm just gonna I'm gonna dive straight in. Um, one of the first things I wanted to ask you about was obviously you've you've taken over your father's official Instagram account and just doing such an awesome job of upholding his legacy there and keeping his name alive, posting some really cool stuff, some really cool throwback stuff. Was was that something that you always wanted to get into? Because obviously he he passed away some time ago now. So is this something that you've always wanted to get into and and really get behind and push further? Or is it something that sort of obviously the last two years, everybody's had a lot more time on their hands? So is it right. did the pandemic help or was this just what your plan was anyway? You know, I think it was the pandemic did help. And also it came about sort of after Dark Side of the Ring. Um, I was really happy with the episode and uh, the message we got across, but there was still a part that was like, okay, well, you know, that's the sad story that's out there now. Now I want to just remember the good times and post positive things and not so negative and just, um, yeah, carry out his legacy that way. So yeah, I had more time on my hands with the pandemic and um, not being involved in wrestling myself the past two years. I was like, well, I miss wrestling. What can I do? What is it about wrestling that um, that that I love being a part of? And it's really just keeping my dad dad's legacy alive. So, yeah, yeah I yeah. started up the Instagram page and I'm trying to post a picture a day. And um, yeah, it's been really fun. Yeah. Like I said, just, just at the start there, you've posted some really cool stuff, some like really rare photos. I imagine are some of them things that you didn't even know existed. Are they all new to you? Um, yeah, they're. Some of them I didn't know they existed. Um, I'm actually at my mom's right now. And after this interview, I'm going to go through another box of photos. So I'm trying to spread it out and not do it all at once. Um, Yeah, but I'm running low on photos. So (laughs) it's time to dig through again. What what I don't know if you can even narrow this down because you've posted a lot of really cool stuff. But is there any have you got any particular like favorite or is there anything that you're still searching for? Like any any stories you've heard of, but you're looking for like one piece of information or one photo or anything like that? Um, yeah, I really liked the photo. It was my dad in Dusty Roads in Japan. That was pretty rare. And people really liked that one. I'd never seen it before. So I loved that one. But I'm really searching for a picture of my dad and Jim Neidhart because I don't seem to have a single photo. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I... Hides in the ring. We have some pictures of Heart Foundation and Bulldogs in the ring, but I don't have a picture yeah. of them like outside of wrestling or, you know, at Stu Hart's house or that's what I'm hoping to come across. Oh, this is probably going to sound like a stupid question. I know that you've you've been interviewed by Natalia before. So does she, have you spoken to Natalia? No, oh not? yeah, we talk all the time. I've asked her if she has any photos and right now she doesn't, but I think she comes across things as well. So yeah. I'm like, keep your eyes open. That's what I'm looking for. So I've told fans too, a couple of fans. Hmm. Well, now that I know, I'll definitely keep an yeah. eye out. Um, yeah, I, I, have tons of, I have tons of photos with Brett and lots of rare photos, which are awesome. They spent so much time together uh, wrestling and training and traveling and, but I don't seem to have any of Jim for some reason. So, hmm. no, I don't see many pictures of Jim just just in general, just just himself yeah. or with anybody else. But I follow on social media loads of different like classic WWE um, accounts or eighties WWE accounts. So hopefully at some point I'll yeah. keep an eye out. I'll keep an eye. Yeah. Out. Just be cool. Never know what's gonna what's gonna pop up. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned Dark Side of the Ring there as well, and that's something that I really wanted to ask about. Um, mm. As a fan, as somebody who watches Dark Side of the Ring, I think they always do an incredible job. Um, you learn so much that you you couldn't have ever imagined knowing before. Um, the most recent one for me was Macho Man and Elizabeth. I learned loads of stuff in there. 
and it was the same from from your father's episode but what was what was the experience like to film and like to bring up those memories and have to talk about obviously I don't want to focus on the negative he did have demons and he did have some you know darker times but how how comfortable were you just openly talking about those yeah um I think it took about six months or so for us to actually do the filming once they told us they wanted to do an episode of my dad so for six months I was like getting really worried I'm like is this the right thing to do because I really love my dad and I didn't want to like you know show a negative side to the world um but I was a fan of the show and I knew that they kind of, they really balance it out, the good and the bad. So I was sort of willing to take that risk being a fan of the show and watching every single episode. And yeah, for the six months leading up until I was really worried. And then after we recorded, I was worried still. Cause I'm like, did I say enough? Like, how are they going to, you know, you don't know how they're going to edit it. Is, you know, is it going to look bad? Is, is it going to look like I'm talking crap about my dad? Um, but once we finally saw it, it was like a weight lifted off our shoulders because they did such a good job, but it was uh, really nerve wracking waiting up to, to watch that episode. When, when was it filmed? Was it over the last few years, like pandemic? It was just last, yeah, it was last November. Oh, I wasn't sure like how far ahead they do it before releasing the episode. So was, did that bring any challenges as well? Obviously filming during the pandemic, did that make things difficult? It kind of did because they had to rent a bunch of airbnbs and everyone filmed in different houses uh well like i think there was two houses two or three houses so um usually you would just do it in you know your own house or whatever but they had to get airbnbs my sister and i arrived together and they were like oh you guys can't even like one of you is gonna have to go upstairs because we wanted to be there for each other to support each other yeah of course thinking about it now it kind of doesn't make any sense because we drove there together and then one was upstairs like and then we switched who was filming so it's like we could have just sat in the room at the same time but they were really strict about the pandemic uh, or the restrictions so yeah well at we least they took it seriously i'm at sorry least seriously at least at least they were at least they were cautious at least they did things right it must have been frustrating but but oh. i mean like I said, yeah, like cameraman had a mask on and stuff but actually they all had masks on we had a mask on until we sat down and started filming yeah it's so weird like as soon as you sit down you can take off a mask i, I still don't really understand yeah. mask protocol it's really weird like i went out for i went out for lunch a few days ago and as, as soon as you sit down you can take off your mask it just does, it yeah. doesn't i'm still in the same space as lots of other people yeah. It's weird. We're, we're getting towards like the better days now. I think it's starting to get a little bit better. Um, but like I say, it didn't affect the the episode. The episode was fantastic. Like I say, I learned a lot. Did you learn anything from, from the different people that you spoke to throughout the process? Anything um, you know about your I mean, family? there was a, a couple of his friends on the show and they talked about, um, was it LSD? I think they took and he like overdosed and he had to take him to the hospital. Like I never, I know it wasn't LSD, was it? I can't remember what what it was but I didn't know about that so it's like okay I'm not overly surprised but yeah 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 uh, no I was, just, I was just curious I don't know how that whole process works like if everybody gets together and discusses what's going to be said or anything like that but no it was like I say really really cool episode yeah there. and actually I didn't know his friends before and actually as well it was a surprise to me how close they were and how much they loved my dad um so that was really nice to see that he had friends, you know, that were still shedding tears recording. Uh, that was Gary Ports. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I did learn the friendship they had was really strong. And now we have a friendship as well. And it's cool. Yeah. And it was really touching, like the way that it ended with what your mom said as well. It was it was really beautiful. It really was considering everybody's got this thing in their head. I think it's the same with every Dark Side episode. You go into it thinking, oh, this was such a controversial thing. But then you start to see like the more human side to it and the you know how these wrestlers had friends and how they have families and stuff like that and it's not all always doom and gloom yeah that's what i really like about it you're right like it's yeah they showed the human side of my dad and that's really what we wanted so i think we achieved what we were hoping to oh absolutely 100 100 so the big question and i'm sure you must get asked this a lot like i said I, i i'm sorry if i ask something that you've been asked countless times before but 
really, why, what do you think the main reason is that your father isn't in the Hall of Fame yet? I know the WWE Hall of Fame isn't the be-all and end-all. There are other Hall of Fames, but it's the one everybody knows. It's the one we all look forward to seeing who's going to be announced. Obviously, um, British Bulldog, David Boy Smith, was finally inducted after so many years of fans crying out for him to be in there. Obviously, tag team partner with your dad, great friends with your dad. Do you think maybe his inclusion in there might now spur WWE on to to induct your father at some point? Yeah, I really just think it's a matter of time and it's just been a matter of time. Um, You know, they do a ceremony every year and so they have to really stretch it out. And yeah, it makes sense. Usually the way they sort of do it is Davey's in now. Well, it would make sense if they did the tag team next or, you know, my dad. I'm not sure how they'll do that, but. I think that it's just a matter of time. I'm not really worried about it. And I think it's going to be perfect timing, even the way dark side, you know, that kind of brought him back up um, his name back up. And that was what I was hoping for and starting his Instagram page. And so I think it's just a matter of time and it'll happen naturally. His, His name is always one of those names when it gets around sort of like, August, September, October sort of time and everybody starts talking about WrestleMania and the build to WrestleMania, the Hall of Fame. Oh, who do you think is going to go in the Hall of Fame? He is always one of those names that comes up. People just cannot understand why he's not in there yet. I assume, obviously, that there have been some demons, but he was still an incredible athlete. And if WWE just focus on that side of things, you know? Yeah, and there are other people that have had demons as well or, you know. More the better in Hall of Fame, so yeah, yeah. Look how many times they fired people and brought them back. They've they've built bridges that they had burnt. People like Ultimate Warrior, you know. There's there's loads of names that I've I I don't know how to word it, but had worse relationships with the company than your father did, you know. And yeah. he is so fondly remembered for just being such a good wrestler, and that's what it should focus on. You should be in there because of what you did for the business. And he was he was a trailblazer, you know, loads and loads and loads of wrestlers always say he is he is one of the guys who helped them get into wrestling. He yeah. inspired them. And they did a nice tribute when my dad passed away. It was just a little what, yeah. three minute video and that was touching and nice. So nice to know they do care and respect him and, you know, view him that way. So, I yeah, I do think it's just a matter of time and I can't wait. Yeah. So I, I assume you would be more than happy to to go up there and be the main person to induct your dad? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it should be me and my siblings, my my dad's three children. 100%. No, 100%. Um, I don't, obviously, I think the, the, the other concern is with COVID, obviously this most recent Hall of Fame, we had a really different Hall of Fame to normal, didn't we? Like they were really cut down speeches. I imagine you'd have quite a lot that you'd want to share. Yeah. Um, however they want to do it is fine by me, so... I mean, I can make it short, short and sweet. Yeah. Over it's three minutes. As long as I'm up there, I'm happy. Yeah, as long as you're there, as long as you're honouring him, like I say, he. Um, I I live in Coventry in the in the Midlands. Um, I've been up that sort of like neck of the woods, up around Wigan in the past. Um, I've seen posters up. I've seen posters up of the British Bulldog around, just around and about. Um, yeah. and it's really cool to see. And I imagine a lot of that is is down to you and helping to keep his legacy alive. People still remember him. They still talk about him, which is lovely. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not sure what a difference I'm making in Wigan, but... <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. Maybe a little bit of a difference. I'm sure there's loads of devout fans that are following the Instagram and, and really enjoying what you're, what you're posting. Um, and I, th- I think a bit of a, a more like touchy subject that I wanted to ask about is what, what was it like growing up? Because I don't think I've... I don't think I've spoken to the the children of any wrestlers on on the show um, no. of the last. Okay. Thing. How long have I been doing this? Fifteen months or so. I've been doing the podcast, and yeah, I think you are the first child of a wrestler who I've actually had on the show. So, what's it like growing up with one of your parents constantly away, constantly on the road? Because we hear, you know, we hear about these so so many wrestlers now have got really young families, but but what's it like for the family? Yeah, my, so my dad, I mean, when he was in Japan, it'd be like six week tours, he would be gone. So I was kind of just used to it. And mm-hmm. my mom's sister, Julie, was married to Bret Hart. So same thing. So two sisters who were used to, were married to wrestlers, they were on the road all the time. Uh, Julie had four kids, there's three of us. So we just did everything together. So um, I guess 
we liked life like that. Like we, like our cousins were like our siblings. We always had sleepovers and did everything together. And we were just, we had each other and we were used to our dads being gone. And, but when they would come home and be like, okay, well now we have to go home and do like the family thing, do family dinners. Uh, yeah, we do Sunday dinners always up at Stu Hart's house. And um, my dad always came home with gifts when he was wrestling on the road. He'd come home from Japan with gifts from Japan for us. And um, we had a wrestling ring. I think Brett had a wrestling ring too, but you know, we were always up at the hard house. Basically there was a wrestling ring, whatever house we went to. <laughs> so we were kids playing around in the ring and um, yeah, our moms were mom and dad when dad was on the road and they're just super strong women and did a great job raising us. So, and we liked when dad was home, but yeah, we weren't used to being around that often. So. Yeah, I was going to say that must have made it even more special when you when you did get to spend time with him. Was he when when he comes when he used to come home? How long would you usually have with him? Because I I don't understand wrestlers' schedules. I don't know how it works. I know they are on the road for like three hundred days of the year. So did you ever get substantial time with him? Uh, I can't quite remember. I think it would only be like a week, <laughs> and of course I was probably in school as well. So yeah, yeah. So like a few days and a few evenings, really. Yeah. Yeah, you never you never consider as a fan like the toll that it takes on families. Um, and then when he'd be home, he'd be resting his body. So he was often like napping all day. You know, he was in a lot of pain, taking painkillers and stuff, um, oh. sleeping, so resting his body. Yeah, yeah, resting his body to provide for his family. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so do you have, this is gonna, probably going to be really hard to pinpoint, do you have any particular like cherished memories of, of, of your father any any really fond memories when you did spend time together uh my dad I was I'm the, the eldest so his baby girl uh he spoiled me a lot so he did really sweet things I, and I can think back um I think I was four it was my fourth birthday and I asked for a horse and my dad delivered. We were in no way, like we lived on an acreage. We had the space for it, but we had no idea how to take care of a horse. <laughs> so it was just like, okay, I'm going to take you outside to see your birthday present. And then like out runs this horse. And I'm like, wow, I don't even have a picture of it. Cause then our neighbors actually had horses and knew what they were doing. So we ended up like selling it to the neighbors and they took this horse, but it was just him like providing me that moment of like, here's your birthday present. Here's your pony. Um, so he always did things like that, you know, when he was wrestling, um, making pretty good money, he. So unfortunately guys, we had some technical issues there. We had to cut the interview short to be fair. It was a nice short one anyway, sort of coming towards the end. Only had a few more questions around things that are coming up soon for the dynamite kids. So if you head to Instagram and follow Bronwyn jewel, that's where you'll find Bronwyn and everything that she posts. And if you go to official dynamite kid, you'll see all of the amazing stuff that she posts there. Like we were talking about all of those really cool retro photos, all the rare stuff that you might not have seen before. You might've seen before and you just need your memory refreshing, just a bit of nostalgia, a lot of fun, loads of great stuff over there. There is, as I was about to mention as well, towards the end of the interview, there's a new um, Fighters First clothing line of the Dynamite Kid coming out very soon. That's already looking awesome. There's always new figures coming out, and there's a new book on the, uh, on the horizon based on the British Bulldogs, so keep an eye out for that. As I say, guys, at the very start of the interview, please make sure you hit subscribe if you've watched this on YouTube. Please make sure you hit follow if you listen on audio platforms. Hit up my link tree as well because I've now got a mailing list so you can sign up for emails on exclusives, competitions, news, all that kind of stuff, and you'll be alerted to all of my new episodes. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. As always, I look forward to catching you again next time on It's My Wrestling Podcast. Thank you.